Welcome back to another tutorial on AP Classroom. This one I'm really excited about, and the reason why is that it goes over the question bank. Now, I know you're probably like, Zucker, you're getting a little AP nerdy on us. But I'll explain why this is so important to me and why I get so excited. You know, years ago when they made all the changes to AP, I thought it was pretty good, but then I ran into the problems that it created. Whenever I tried to create a test, it was really tough. I mean, you know, creating questions and all the distractors are hard enough. But then on top of that, when you have to create all the stimuli as well, that can make it really difficult. The great news is the question bank takes all of that away from you. You can get all the stimuli that you need as far as the questions go, and you can have questions that don't have stimulus at all. And you can even create your own questions, which really is pretty great. So today what I want to do is show you how all that works because I think it makes your life a lot easier. Okay, we're going to go ahead and we're going to access AP Classroom. Now, if you want, as you can see on this main page, you can go directly to the question bank that's right here under the icon for my AP US History class. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to AP Classroom. And the reason why I want to go to that interface once again is so I can show you the full range of what you're able to do here. So if I go over to the question bank on that left hand side for the toolbar, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to all questions. Now once I get here, there's a number of things that are going to be really important. So before we jump into the question bank itself, I want to talk about the different types of questions that are available to you. And there are about four of them. The first one are what are called topic questions. The topic questions you can find under each one of the units that you're teaching through. Second type are the progress checks. When you get done with a unit, you get a set of practice questions that you can give as formative practice for your students. The third type are going to be the questions that, have, that are being released here on the question bank that go back for like 20 years off of all the AP tests that we've had in the past. And the fourth and final type of question is going to be a question that comes from released practice exams. And each year they're going to be releasing a practice exam that you can use for your students, especially for that mock AP at the end of the year. Okay, having said all this, I wanna show you how you can look up these questions. And it really is easy. There are multiple options to do this. First big option is right here under the search bar. The search bar operates just like you would do if you were using like a Google search. So if I wanted to look up, for example, the French and Indian War, I would go ahead and type that in and I could go ahead and search for that. And it's gonna give me a ton of different options down here as to what I wanna use. Now I can even, even filter that out. I can filter that to all results. I can filter it to questions. I can filter it to keywords. Now if I don't wanna use that search bar or if I wanna narrow things down even more, I have a whole bunch of different filtering options that I can use. I can use the unit and topic. This takes me through each one of the major units that we have and I can filter down according to that. Another one I can filter down is by learning objective. What are the overall things I'm trying to teach at that time? Of course, one of the ones that's really helpful is historical thinking skill. I can go ahead and decide what type of historical thinking skill I want to test. That's going to help me a lot when I gather my data later on to see how the students are doing. There's also thematic focus. I teach in my class, the acronym I use is INSPECT, I know other people use SPICE. There are other types of acronyms you can use, but this is a great way to be able to test the students on particular themes. We also have over here the assessment purpose, so that here you get into formative versus summative. And we can do the question type. So this is like if I wanted to ask a multiple choice or a short answer question, long essay or DBQ, I can filter it down according to all of that. Last one that might seem a little bit strange is exam alignment, high or partial. Here's why that's so important. A high alignment means that you are testing based upon skill and content and themes. Partial means that it's just picking out one or the others of those. When would you want to do something like that? Well, the partial might be really good at the beginning of the year, or if you're just starting off a unit and you want to do some checks off of that. Okay, the next big thing I want to show you is authoring your own question. This is a great way that you can use this site to author your own question and be able to search up a little bit later. If you go over here to the top right hand side, you'll notice where it says author new question. When I click on this, I can choose which type I want to do, multiple choice or a free response. I'm going to go ahead and do multiple choice. And when I do this, all I have to do is come over here and I can basically input all the information I would need into creating this. So for example, if I wanted to compose a question, I could put in my stimulus up here, compose a question, and then I can add in my different multiple choice answers, including the distractors, and then eventually the correct answer off of that. Now at the very end of this, I want to make sure that I tag 
um, what I'm doing here, and that will make it easier for me to be able to search these out in the future. Now, what if you want to create your own test off of here? This is a great way to not only test the students, but then check on how they did afterwards, especially when it comes to themes and skills. It's pretty easy to do. All you have to do is come on over here to the plus sign up on this side, and you would go ahead and click it. Now, in order to create something like this, you're gonna to have to create your own quiz. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna create this as a test quiz. And you will notice that that question is already up on that quiz. And I can just go back and continue adding questions. Now, what is this gonna eventually look like? Well, let's go up to the preview and see what it looks like. Now, in this case, I only have one question, right? But here's what my particular quiz would end up looking like at the end. Now, let's say though that I want to assign that quiz. Here's how I can assign the quiz. I go over to assigning it right here, and all I have to do is fill out all the information on this dialog box. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead and assign it. I have some classes at school, but I'm gonna go ahead and do my AP demo class. So all these students are fictional. We don't have to worry about showing their names or anything like that. Um, so I'm gonna assign it to my AP demo class, and I'm gonna go ahead and fill this out. So today is the 16th of June. I'm gonna go ahead and make this due on the 20th. And I'm gonna choose a time here. So let's go ahead and say by 3 p.m. on that particular day. And I'm gonna go ahead and assign it. Now here's why this becomes so important. Let's go ahead and we're gonna check out and see whether or not this is actually working. If I come up to the top up here, I can actually change to my student view. Now in this particular case, remember I chose my demo class, that way we don't have to worry about showing any real students. And I'm gonna just choose a fake student from that demo class, Melissa Alexander. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a look and see what Melissa would see if she opened up her site. So when we get over to Melissa's site, notice up here, here is the test quiz. So if I was Melissa, I would go ahead and press begin. And as soon as I've done that, here is the test. And she can go ahead and start taking that test. So the great thing about AP Classroom is that you can filter down to the questions you wanna use, you can create your own question, and on top of that, you can create a quiz or test, have the students take it, and then after that, use some of the other techniques that we've talked about in the other videos on how to assess those results and see how your students are doing. If you see overall in your class that students are really struggling with a particular historical thinking skill or they're struggling with a part of the content, that allows you to go back and you can reteach it, or you can really focus in on those students who are having a hard time off of that. So I hope this gives you a lot of different options for AP Classroom under the question bank. This is why I get so excited about it. I think it just offers us a lot of opportunities here on how we can work with our students. See you in class.